I turned down a lot of reviews because either there's nothing interesting to talk about or it's just straight up ugly. Just being honest. I hate it when startup brands approach me and they use words like innovative and our favorite disruptive. And the conversation usually goes something like this. Here's our innovative design that will disrupt the industry. Okay, let me see it. Now I'm not generalizing here because there are rare instances, very rare, when micro brands or new startup brands approach me with a new design with decent specs. And that's so refreshing to see. Back two, three, four years ago, if you were a micro brand, you were already something kind of unique regardless of what watch you put out because micro brands were a relatively new phenomenon. But now there are so many of them that they should be called macro brands. Seriously, micro brands are no longer a new thing. There's a new brand coming out nearly every single day. So your new Submariner homage is no longer going to be interesting if it ever was interesting in the first place, which I doubt. On the other hand, these are quite cool. This is the Chronicle from a new brand called Mitch and Mason, which is their interpretation of the ideal field watch. The motivation was to combine both the vintage appeal while maintaining the functionality of modern watches. Why this caught my attention is because the whole package is unique. Starting with the case, it's only 36.5 millimeters and has these very distinct surfaces that alternate from brush to polish. The number of faces on the lugs make the watch feel like it's a gemstone with all of its different facets. Now this isn't your typical round case, clearly the shape is something we find often in vintage military watches, especially this blocky case to lug integration. The next thing that caught my eye was the sandwich dial and this hour hand. I've never seen this hand design before and that's because it was made by the brand to resemble a knot. It represents their desire to intertwine vintage with modern. The vintage aspect is clearly there. The entire design and size speaks for itself. The integration of modern is also present. We have an AR coated sapphire crystal, super luminova, screw down case back, screw down crown, which makes this watch 200 meters water resistant. So even though it looks quite petite, it's actually a very capable tool watch. The movement side of this prototype is the Salida SW200-1, but the production models will house the Myota 9039. It's a decent movement that beats at 28,800, hacking, hand winding, 42 hour power reserve, and time only, so no date. That allows the dial to maintain its symmetry, and speaking of the dial, it has this metallic vertical brush finish. A lot easier to see on the blue version, especially when it hits the light but otherwise it looks matted. I actually quite like this watch. I think it looks pretty awesome and on wrist it's extremely comfortable with its smaller size. The diameter is only 36.5 and the lug to lug is only 43.5. I mean how many brands do you know these days that are putting out watches in this size? Obviously if you like big watches then this isn't for you. If you also don't like vintage stuff then you'll hate this faux patina loom but I think it was tastefully done. Now on the other hand a gripe I have with this watch is the crown. There isn't enough traction on the ridges to get a good grip so my fingers would just slide off, but Mitch and Mason already stated that the production models will have less ridges but deeper engraving for a better purchase on the crown. And speaking of change, the production models will also have 5 layers of air coating, significantly improved finishing and tolerances, as well as a shortened second hand. So that means the hand will touch the outer rim of the second track exactly. So everything that I felt like could be improved with these prototypes are already being addressed by the company which is pretty awesome to see. But there still is one thing that I don't like about this watch that I hope would also be addressed and that is the text at the top of the dial. There's just too much clutter on that side of the dial and I think it could be significantly improved if they removed or replaced some of them. It wouldn't look so cluttered if there wasn't the MM logo and the Mitch Mason logo and the Chronicle text. I would much prefer to remove the Chronicle text from the top and put it on the bottom where Automatic is. Now the non sandwich dial versions of the Chronicle have a cleaner dial setup since the MM logo isn't there. So I wish these sandwich versions also had that layout. But yeah, I'm nitpicking at this stage so it's clear that I like this watch. I prefer the black version because it allows that loom to really pop and the orange accents aren't too overpowering when compared to the blue version. The Chronicle to me just feels like a very fun watch to wear because it is so different which I appreciate a lot especially these days with the oversaturated market of micro brands. I've been noticing a lot of watches that are coming out that aren't really that interesting. It just sucks away the fun from this hobby when we see repeated designs being offered over and over again.
And so the fact that they went with a smaller case, a completely different design, an hour hand that not everyone might like is what makes this so charming for me. So that's it. The Chronicle is up for pre-order right now for 449 USD, which you can check out. It is on the slightly more expensive side of some micro brands, but I think you are getting a solid watch. Everything from just how it feels in hand and on wrist. There's a lot of attention to detail that went into this piece and I think the price isn't too bad. Now I know some people are going to complain about the price point relative to what movement is being offered. A lot of brands are doing this. There are so many watches out there with great finishing, great tolerances, but they only run on an ETA movement. Just because a watch has a Seiko or a Salida movement, don't automatically disregard it because there could be other aspects of the watch that are the highlight of the piece. They just want to make sure that they get something in there to power the watch up that's reliable. That allows more room and expense to be put on the actual design, which I believe is 80% of any watch to be honest. All right, so that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram at loom underscore shot and I'll see you guys in the next video. Are they seriously mowing the lawn at 8pm? How do you even see the grass? Who mows the lawn at 8pm? <laughs>